Hey game makers, my name is Nelderson, uh, and today I want to go over my brand new MV online system. Uh, this is not going to be a comprehensive tutorial, this is going to be more of an overview, kind of where I came from, where I'm going to, that sort of thing. Okay. So first things first, when you get into this GitHub, by the way, github.com slash Nelderson slash MV underscore online. Okay, I will have this within my uh, JS plugin and development forum entry, which is called Nelderson Online Core. Um, I am just about to update this in a few minutes with everything you can imagine on that. Okay, so with that said, uh, as you can see, the server documentation I really didn't get to. So uh, over the next few days, I'm going to get to the documentation on how to install it on how to use it, on how to run it step by step. I'm also going to make a couple of YouTube videos because uh, there's a lot. Uh, in all honesty, you know, I I did not always, uh, I was not always a web developer. I was not always a developer. So I know how hard it can be to learn this stuff when you don't know it. So uh, the easiest way I figured we'd attack this is um, I'll write as much documentation as possible. And I will also create as many YouTube videos as necessary for each server resource that I come out with. So with that, let's get into the basic, basic things about this. So we got a readme, we got a get ignore. You don't have to worry about those two things. All right, we got game resources and server. Game resources is going to kind of be <clears throat> anything that is required by your game. So right now, I'm not going to have a demo game by default. And I did this specifically for a reason i don't want people to take a demo and then try to make it work for them i'd rather them implement this in their own game and work from there okay so this is something that everyone could put into their game no problem any existing game it really shouldn't affect with other plugins um once again i don't know what you use for other plugins but there aren't too many online plugins that i'm aware of uh, I think uh, Dicta made a gold system that you could probably use this on top of it with. I mean, something along those lines. So, game resources. JS folder, if you look, it's similar to what you would see in your normal JS folder, you know, with libraries and plugins. Okay, the libraries includes these three uh, files right here. Crypto is a, um, uh, it's a cryptography. It's used for logging in, okay? Uh, that's primarily what I use this for. jQuery is used for get and post requests. Um, and also, I think I use it for appending HTML in the login screen itself. So that's there. And then Socket.io is what we're going to be using to make Socket.io. So, cool. All right. And then plugins. Right now, all I have is main core and login core. And I'm going to make separate videos for each of these things. Uh, and we will go over that at a later date. So hang tight on that. All right. And that is uh, sample index goes over. If you look at this Nell add part and this Nell add part, it's pretty much just um, adding bootstrap from the CDN for bootstrap as well as uh, the CSS file, which I just realized I did not add, which I will add uh, to this to this repo right after this video. Uh, I also added this right down here which adds those library folders that jquery and the crypto and the socket iojs that's in the library folder so pretty much if you were to get this game and we'll go over this later uh you would go into the js folder you go into the libraries you copy these three files put them into your library folder um, into your js library folder uh, in your game as well as the plugins as well as modify your index.html to add those few things that I added and you're good to go. That's pretty much all you need to do for the game. Uh, it's not as simple as other plugins where you just throw in a plugin and play. Um, you're essentially making your MV game into a web app. Uh, so th there's gonna be a lot of uh, learning along the way. And once again, when we get into the setup, we'll go over all of this in great, great detail. I'm just going over what's here so that you're not totally confused. All right. With that server this is where the meat and potatoes are at okay 
So let's take a look really quick at server.js and I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible. So when I made my original uh, prototype, I used only sockets. So right down here, this IO on connection is just a socket connection. So IO is require socket IO server, which is an HTTP, HTTP server. <laughs> wow. It's a long day. Um, so it's an HTTP server running the socket IO and on connection, a couple things happen. And I threw an example socket in here, which binds the socket IO module. And we'll get into how all this works once again, at another function. But, uh, originally I did just a socket connection, uh, which worked great. And it's, I mean, it's super fast. It's reliable. It works. The only problem was, uh, there was no security. Um, it pretty much, you know, somebody could make their own socket weird connection and connect to yours and do man in the middle of in, man in the middle attacks and all that sort of thing. And nobody wants that. You know, as I started getting more serious, I realized, Hey, we need to at least track what's going on. If, if not being able to outright stop it. And that is why I decided to go with not only socket IO, but require um, a login using Express and a combination with uh, JSON web tokens, or sometimes referred to as JOTs. Okay, uh, whenever you see JWT, they're referred to as JOTs in the web development world. So uh, I'm going to refer to them as JSON web tokens because it's a little more convenient for people who don't know what they are. Okay, so JSON web tokens, uh, pretty much the way it works is. Uh, if you look here, so express API, so pretty much right here, API routes, login routes. So this takes in the login routes. Uh, it requires you, well, that's not what this requires for, but, uh, pretty much the API requires you to log in and then, then it checks your, when you log in, if we come over to the server, API routes login roots, um, JSON web tokens. When you log in, log in, when you log in, uh, it creates this profile and it token. Whoa. Uh, let's try this again. When you go down to login, <coughs> uh, it creates this profile and then the JSON web token is signed with your profile and the config JWC secret, which once again, we'll get into this config file and how to change it and all that good stuff. Um, and this one expires in five minutes, but the, the point is, um, it requires a token in order to get into the IO module. So in order, so in order to get into the socket IO connection, you need to be authorized with the, with the JSON web token. So long story short, this is all for security. Okay. The reason why I didn't go just uh, socket IO is because I also wanted you to, you have to be logged in in order to use it. So that's what I did with that. Uh, really, really, really quick on this server JS, how I have it set up. Uh, super quick. Uh, you get the express app, you have your HTTP server using express. You have your socket IO server. We kind of talked about how you log in authenticate. Uh, since I already had to write an express API for the authentication, I figured, Hey, why not see if we can make something authentication required for, um, API routes. Some people are just used to get and post and stuff like that. And it's, uh, or they just don't need anything that's real time communication like sockets. So they just want to create like, um, you know, something like a gold posting system or something like that. Something easy. Uh, I have an example of how you would set that up. And I tried to make this all very, very modular so that other developers can come in, write their own code for this. And then you just kind of require what you want and you don't want it. You just comment this out and call it a day. I mean, it, it's really meant to be very modular, add what you want, take what you want. Um, and you don't have to necessarily expose anything. Okay. 
Uh, and then socket IO modules are kind of the same thing where I did like an example socket and you can go through and check in that socket modules example socket. Um, it's in this current directory. You can check this all out on GitHub once again. So uh, this example socket, it requires and I exported it as a function. So I actually bind the socket right here using the socket and the IO module, which is, is more for namespacing. Once again, I will get into very detailed <laughs> explanations on all of this at a later time. I just want to kind of set the overview of how I set this up and why I've set it up this way. Uh, so we can really dive in a little bit deeper than this. Uh, so example socket, example socket is being called right here. Okay, and this just binds the socket IO modules uh, to the actual to the actual socket. Okay, uh, it's going to be similar to uh, when you have this all properly configured, and we'll go over how to configure everything because you actually do need to configure stuff. Um, there's a lot of things to go over in here and where to get all the information for this. And there's some extra things if you want to use Gmail with the uh, transporter. So we'll, we'll get into all of that. Okay. At a later time, but just to show you how it will function, I will refer to my prototype right over here. Um, so if you'll notice my login screen looks awfully similar to if anyone's checked out, uh, uh, sir, Mac potatoes, um, little online thing it is almost exactly the same because I pretty much um, borrowed the code to get this one done it's pretty much how I would phrase it uh, I did not reinvent the wheel let's just put it like that okay good old copy paste uh, so a lot of credit to sir Mac potato for this actual login window uh, I, I have uh, full intention to make this a little prettier and stuff like that and we'll work on that as a team with everybody but uh, I just wanted to get something out there. This is just a prototype. It's no frills. It's no, it's nothing crazy. So one of the big things I did was register. Uh, and this is actually one of the things I changed in my online system. Something coming up right here. All right. So let's make an awesome username. Something like uh, test one. Uh, noticing Ming. Uh, Gmail. And do some sort of super secure password. Submit that. Check your email for the activation code. Uh, this is one of the things that I actually changed right off the bat. Uh, instead of having to put in an activation code, which um, especially for like mobile devices and stuff like that is absolutely brutal because there is no just copy paste in this screen um, if you're not in a browser. So uh, one of the things I did was I put it to a, str uh, I exposed the API so that it sends you a link instead of an activation code. Um, and I'm just not going to show you this on screen because there is absolutely no need. It pretty much came to my email. Activation code, throw it in. Awesome. Signed in. I am now user test one, I believe. Yeah, user test one. So I'm going to connect this Nelderson over here. And I'm going to pop up on the screen over here. And as you can see from the way that I move, you can see me. I can see you. Um, not really anything super crazy, but hey, this is pinging off a server probably a few hundred miles away. So, you know, even though this is local browser, uh, the actual server itself is out of town. So, you know, it works and it works pretty well. Uh, I haven't tested it in full um with like you know 100 users or anything like that but i'm hoping we can change that i'm going to come out with a better prototype uh like you see here the the chat window is kind of yeah there's not a lot to it so uh th this was just to show like hey this is possible this is totally possible see this is totally possible so um this was just a prototype show that it's possible uh, the reality is trying to get it scalable to the point where I feel comfortable giving it out to all of you was a little bit more work than I intended. Um, but I'm hoping that this online system, this new online system that I'm making is a little bit, um, it's not going to be straightforward per se, but, um, at least it'll give developers ideas on how to implement their own systems, not necessarily MMO, which is what this was originally trying to go for with my, uh, 
like almost like a passive MMO system where you can see other people moving around on the screen and you can talk with them, but they can't interact with the game. Um, I think we can do a little bit better than that. Uh, this is just kind of, you know, it's a prototype. It's kind of, hey, this is totally possible. Well, let's see what we can do with it. So that's what's going on with this. Okay, that's the prototype. That's it. There is no frills. There's nothing to do in the map. That is pretty much it. Okay, with that, let's go back here. Okay, so right now, this server uh, only comes with the login. Uh, the server and the game resources only come with the login. Um, in the future, uh, kind of like I had with this over here, I really do want to come up with a better chat window. Right now, this kind of looks terrible. I'm thinking of doing something where um, it uses a game window, so it looks like it's a part of your game. It's a little bit more natural. Um, I'm definitely going to try and work with something along those lines. But the first thing I really want to do is make sure this login system is as clean and as relatively secure as possible and really try to nail down that login window uh, to make it look a little bit better, a little bit more inter uh, integrated into your game. Um, so, so that's the sort of thing that I am working with. Uh, once again, this is just an overview. <laughs> I, I know I threw a lot out there and it's, it, it, it's supposed to be a lot. It's supposed to not make a lot of sense right now. Okay. Like I, like I said, I haven't even made the, the true documentation. I have to sit down, come up with a checklist of everything that needs to be done in order to just install it on your system. You know, then people have, you know, Macintoshes and window machines and everything else. So th th there's a lot to process. There's a lot to make sure that it works. Uh, but uh, hang tight. It's coming. So if I went too fast, do you have anything that you want to comment on or are worried about or are hoping that I'll do? By all means, leave a comment. But um, uh, as far as future requests goes, don't be surprised if I say no to yours. Uh, it, it's not that I don't want to do it. It's not that it's not possible. It's that I really want to dedicate my time to making sure that this core is pretty much automatic. You can set it up. You can configure a few things that are different from everybody else's com uh, configurations. And you have a login system. You have a reliable login system that you can just use. You don't have to worry about or think about. It's just there and it's usable. And... Um, yeah, and then from there, we can start working on things like seeing other people on screens or even, you know, down the line, definitely something along the lines of like a, a PvP battle system. Even if it's something as simple as like uh, the old Game Boy style Pokemon games where you go to a specific spot and you type in like an access code that somebody else generates. So that way you can both do like a quick little side view battle system for each other. I mean, it, it is totally possible to do that but we need to lay the groundwork so that it's reliable and it's consistent across everybody's device um, because this is not um, terribly complicated but it's also uh, if we keep having to recreate the login systems and the socket IO and the express API's and everything else it just becomes more and more of a hassle uh, if you're not a developer so so I'm trying to make this a little bit easier for everyone. Uh, like I said, if you have any questions, throw in a comment, subscribe, do what you got to do. I'm coming out with more videos. We're going to learn this together. It's going to be fun. I'm Nelson. Later, game makers.